Namaste. How are you doing? The shape of the sphere is all over us. And we have 12 points within where we can find this shape. And of them, three are the most important. The first is located in the hips. Yeah? The kandanadi, the lingam of the hips. Right? It's the oblong shape, like the shape of the egg, and it's positioned upright. So from the tail, and it domes to the side, and then ends uh, below the Manipura Chakra. Actually, it touches the Manipura Chakra, a yeah, portion of the Manipura Chakra. So the kandanadi is important because uh, it's encompassing. It occupies the, um, all of the hip region. Yeah, and then a bit of the core region. So this is where the three fundamental nadis come from, Ida Pingala Shushumna. And this regulates three important sense organs or sense function, smell, muladhara, taste, vadishtana, and eyesight, the Manipura chakra. So it's really important that the hips are healthy, mobile, yeah, and open. Yeah, and then we need to purify the blockages there through on and off the mat observances, pranayama, and of course, healthy lifestyle, asana. All of them will promote the yeah, function of the kandanadi, the lingam. All right, and it's also connected to a vision. Yeah, so it is the yotir, yeah, the uh, light. Yeah, so the Manipura chakra uh, is uh, directly yeah, connected to the eyesight, the optical function, and the occipital part of the brain. Yeah, so what can we yeah, make out of this? So uh, imbalances in the body, really. So aside from, of course, uh, health issues, well, if you have um, existing health uh, condition, um, but generally, yeah, all of the common yeah, diseases, illnesses, pain uh, we feel, they are caused by energetic stagnation, imbalances. And then by knowing you know, the relationship of the energetic anatomy to our health, then yeah, we can narrow yeah, and then just do distinctive, I'd say, practices or techniques to promote their health. So yoga is not a cure, it's a prevention. Yeah, but yeah, if you, for example, you you feel like your your eyesight become blurry, yeah, it might be an issue of imbalances in the Manipura chakra. So that's uh, the essence. All right. Now the next is around the forehead region, and it's positioned laterally. Yeah. So from the back of the uvula, the nasal cavity, so it goes to the side, the temple, yeah, and right up here, yeah, the soft spot. Yeah. So this is the next one. Yes, yeah, so it's positioned laterally. It ends, um, it starts uh, the talu chakra behind the nasal cavity and it ends where the shahasrara chakra begins. Uh, and then this is what? Yeah, our third eye. So this is our spiritual awareness uh, beyond our senses. So meditation, yeah, chanting, praying, visualization, Mudras, yeah, those are the techniques we practice by promoting yeah, the second lingam or the sphere. All right. And then the last is around the, the, the skull. And it's positioned flat, yeah, horizontally. So from the, the end point of the, the forehead lingam, yeah, so it goes out. Yeah, and, it, and it exits, so it ends uh, at the back of uh, the skull, really inside the brain, where the the neck or the spine and the brain meets. All right, so that's the what well, the pineal gland inside. So it's here. Yeah, so from there it goes out and it ends there. Yeah. So in in samadhi, yeah, the energy we accumulate here, yeah, exits yeah this spot, and then you're gonna feel yeah the the hemispheres yeah. Uh, crawl up to. Yeah, that's why when you experience samadhi, you're going to feel yeah, the, from here, like you're going to feel the energy piercing here and up here, and then you will feel something is crawling inside, and then from there, yeah, it exits yeah, <laughs> the top of the skull, really, literally. So the, the Shahashwara Chakra is uh, what? Our, our divine uh, awareness, yeah, consciousness. Yeah. It's the um, unity. Yeah, our union with with our divine source. Yeah, who we are as sp spiritual uh, crea uh, creation. Yes, so we are. We all come from that seed and the spiritual divine yeah, element. 
you know, which is uh, actually uh, present in all of us. So when when we know about, you know, when we have knowledge of of this, and then we we know, yeah, where are we at the stage of a practice? Yeah, that's one. And number two, yeah, we we appreciate yeah the techniques we do, and not just do them mechanically for the sake of doing them, and then by you visualizing and then meditating upon yeah the essence yeah of the technique, then yes, this is very true. Yeah, if you visualize the shape of the spear, yeah, if it's upright, visualize you're upright, right? So see, yes, yeah, so th that's that's how the lingam is so vital when we meditate and then reflect on it. When it's lateral, yeah, so expanding your awareness. That's why. It's so expansive, yeah. So we go out of the external yeah, senses, and then we yeah, experience the senses out there, yeah, the realm out there. And it when it's lying down flat, yeah. So we go passive, non-reacting. Yeah, it's a state of sattva, yeah, non-reacting. You're just floating there, observing and watching without judging. Yeah, so I will be exploring more of this and then adding techniques <laughs> on how to what develop them. So but for now, this is a good one. This is a good idea already of the lingam. Yeah, see you next time and have a beautiful day. Namaste.